Hello, everyone, and welcome. It's Sonia here back with session six of this wisdom talk I'm doing about encountering the narcissist. And in this session, I want to take a look at how I believe we can begin recovering after having been with a narcissist. So after we have either managed to escape a relationship with a narcissist or if they have discarded us, which I view now as a blessing in disguise and really not that much in disguise because as we take the time to learn and study just what we went through with a narcissist, I believe it will soon become clearer and clearer to us that we are much better off having gotten free from the toxicity of that relationship. But at first, right after we've been with a narcissist, we will most likely be very confused and left wondering what in the world just happened to us, because usually their discard is so brutal and we can see nothing that really merited the narcissist's level of cruel rage and anger towards us. And so we're often left in a very hurt and confused state of heart and mind. And I know when this happened to me, I was left with so many questions that I was really compelled to study. And so that was the primary way I dealt with my post-trauma that I was experiencing after my relationship with a narcissist mercifully ended. And I believe that God was very much leading me at that point to begin to earnestly study the subject of narcissism. So as we begin to get over the initial shock after we have been either discarded by the narcissist or again we were pushed so far to the breaking point that we just knew that we had to get away from them, there will still inevitably be a process then of our needing to come back from or recover from that dark place that the narcissist has left us in. And I believe that our journey out of that dark place happens step by step as we keep moving forward in a daily healing process with God. And I believe one of the ways we can begin to recover maybe more quickly and more completely is to become more aware of the cognitive dissonance that has occurred within us during our relationship with the narcissist. And even though we will be aware that we were treated really badly by the end of our relationship with them, we might not yet fully realize just how cognitively dissonant we have become as a result of their abuse. And so I wanted to share a fairly detailed definition of cognitive dissonance. And this is from Psychology Today. And it says, cognitive dissonance is a term for the state of discomfort felt when two or more modes of thought contradict each other. The clashing cognitions may include ideas, beliefs, or the knowledge that one has behaved in a certain way. And it goes on to say, the theory of cognitive dissonance proposes that people are averse to inconsistencies within their own minds. It offers one explanation for why people sometimes make an effort to adjust their thinking when their own thoughts, words, or behaviors seem to clash with each other. When one learns new information that challenges a deeply held belief, for example, or acts in a way that seems to undercut a favorable self-image, that person may feel motivated to somehow resolve the negative feeling that results to restore cognitive consonance. Though a person may not always resolve cognitive dissonance, the response to it may range from ignoring the source of it to changing one's beliefs or behavior to eliminate the conflict. 
They also mentioned that there are a variety of ways people are thought to resolve the sense of dissonance when cognitions don't seem to fit properly. They may include denying or compartmentalizing unwelcome thoughts, seeking to explain away a thought that doesn't comport with others, or changing what one believes or one's behavior. And so after we have been with a narcissist, a lot of dopamine was produced in our brains by the narcissist and their connection to us. And this is even in spite of all the abuse and brutality we suffered at their hands. But this pleasure that the narcissist gave us when put up against the shocking brutality and hurtful rage they then hurled our way creates cognitive dissonance within us. And in a way, it is like the bucket of cold water on us, shocking us into a different state of being when the narcissist attacks us so cruelly and rages toward us. And as we remember those awful moments of attack, while very unpleasant to have to remember, I believe remembering them can ultimately be an important part of our recovery and healing journey, particularly as an antidote to our addiction to the narcissist. And I believe it can begin to counter that dopamine effect that they have had on us. So I also want to mention here that to counter the cognitive dissonance, I also believe it's helpful for us to reflect and really ponder all the red flags that came up when we were with the narcissist. Those moments of intuition where we had that gut feeling that something was inconsistent and really off with them. And while again, these memories can be painful, I believe this can really help us in speeding up the breaking of that cognitive dissonance within us. And the last bit of cold water or shock therapy, while very unpleasant to go through, that I also believe can help speed up our recovery, is when we encounter the narcissist after the discard or breakup, and we discover that they usually act as if they never knew us, and will treat us as if we are a total stranger. And while this can be so shocking and really jolting to us, because it is not the way a normal human being is wired to feel or behave. I believe that as we really take in that reality about the narcissist having essentially never bonded to us, it will ultimately speed up our recovery. And so just to wrap up this session six, I want to say again that Remembering those red flags that set off our intuition that we had during our relationship with the narcissist and remembering those awful moments of attack when the narcissist raged at us, while being unpleasant to recall, I believe will ultimately help us to break free of the cognitive dissonance within us caused by the abuse we suffered at the hands of the narcissist. And it will allow us and aid us in being able to move forward on our journey back to wholeness and health. I hope you found this helpful, especially for anyone who might be right now going through recovery after a relationship with a narcissist. And in the next session, session seven, I will be taking a look at, in a little more detail, the mindset of the narcissist. So I will see you in the next video.